we're going to talk a little bit about how lambdas can be used to launch new threads. And before we do that, I want to before we do that, I want to review with you how we launch threads the old way. If we have a class like this, we, we could extend thread, and that would be one way we could create a new thread. However, because our classes tend to already extend something, it's in Java, you can only inherit from one other class, and so this doesn't really work. It's not a convenient way to create a new thread. So let's look, talk about ways we've already uh, used to create new threads. One way we've done it, let me just let me just review with you what a thread looks like. So right now I am inside one of the threads. Most of the programs you have written in your life only have one thread. Does anybody know what the name of that thread is? It's called main. I'm going to prove that to you right now. So if you go over here and ask the thread class. Okay, there you go. So that is how you can ask the current thread its name. And so if I run this, you can see that the name of the thread is main. Now, what I'm going to do is inside here, I'm going to launch a separate thread, and the two threads are going to work independently of one another. So to do that, I'm going to do it the way that I had shown you to do it before. Now, if I do it like this, and then later on I go new thread dot run, it won't work for two reasons. Who remembers what's wrong with running the thread? The thread has one only one abstract method associated with it, which is called run. What's wrong with putting run here? Who remembers the right way to start a thread? Okay, Mr. Milland is chiming in. You have to say start instead of run. And so now the only thing though is that I need to tie something in here so it knows I'm talking about so it knows I'm talking about uh, which particular method is going to be associated with this thread. And so I need to put something in here. Okay, Mr. Millen, this is your day. I need to put in an anonymous inner class or something, but of what type? That's my question. Yes, sir. It's runnable. So I need to put a runnable object in here. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new runnable. This should all be review for you. And I'm going to use an anonymous inner class structure here to create the runnable. And here I need to say at override. OK, so basically in the main method right here, I'm going to just move this down a little bit over here. And what I'm going to do is over here. So I've created a new thread. I'm starting the thread. And then here is my original thread, which is the main thread. And let me just make sure I've done this correctly. Yeah. And so now I have to start my other thread to get it to actually do anything. And here, if I've done this correctly, this one should print main, and this one should print the name of this other thread. Now, you can name your threads in Java. I haven't done that. I'm not going to get into that complication today. But it also has a default name. I think it's going to be like thread-1 or something like that. So let's start with this one. Oh, thread 0. OK, so you can see, oops. Now, something very interesting happened right here. Uh, does anybody know why it's writing like this? Let me show you, for example. Does anybody know what happened here? Why did mine do that and yours not do that? Mr. Mulcahy, sir, can you tell me why it says inside a different thread with na name main thread zero? Look, it's almost as if it ran this line, then this line. And then that line, what kind of crazy behavior is that? The scheduler happened to run the other thread, ran this, put this thread to sleep, then started up this thread, printed the word main, and then went back and finished running this thread. On your machine, it was probably a different sequence. So if I was to run this again, the exact same thing, you can see this time I got a completely different sequence. This time, this thread ran its print statement before the other thread got started. So this shows you that when you're multi-threading, you can't predict which thread's going to run first. That's the whole idea behind multi-threading. You're launching a parallel thread. You're letting the scheduler dictate which threads run when. So now you can see I've got my two different threads going. This is how you can launch. And you can launch as many threads as you want. So 
In terms of review work, what I want to show you here is that the runnable interface, and this is indeed an interface, it has only one abstract method that you want to override, which is the run method. And even though it's got this run method that you override, what you want to call is start. Start builds the machinery for the thread, and then we'll call run on your thread. But it needs to build the machinery in the background first. So now my question to you is, since runnable has only one abstract method, what type of interface do we say that it is? It's called a functional interface. So runnable is functional. So runnable is a functional interface. Since it's a functional interface, we can implement its abstract method, in this case run, by simply using a lambda expression. So I would like you now to replace this code with a simple lambda expression. Mr. Asari, do you have a working, sir? Okay, sir, tell me how to run this new thread. Let me first of all put this in a comment so if we end up needing it again, we know where to find it. Okay, sir, we're right here now. We could do it like this. I'll just make it fancier by using only a single line. All right, so you can see that it gets much easier now because I can, if it's a simple thing that I wanna do in the other thread, I can just do this like this. And as Mr. Afsari has suggested, if it's multiple lines, it's a more complicated method you have to run, then you have to use the curly brackets. Well, let's just run this. I don't think we need this anymore. These two? Yeah. They probably should be uh, like that. It makes it much easier to read, I think. And you can see that uh, I've got, it gave it a different name, interestingly. Uh, but in any case, uh, there's uh, the main method, and then here's a different thread that's running. It looks like the thread names are ran have some randomness associated with them. Okay. So that is a very simple way of running multiple threads using Lambda interfaces.